everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Amanda, I'm a physio and I have a special interest in sports injuries. After my last video on pes and sinusitis, I saw there was a huge need for more information on this condition. People seem to battle for a long time with this condition and despite treatment, somewhere along their recovery process, they're still feeling very lost. I've decided to do a small series on rehabilitation exercises for pes and sinusitis. I hope that if you follow along with me, you will feel a difference after doing these exercises for some time. We know that pes and sinusitis often has its cause in poor biomechanics. Biomechanics is a term used to describe how our body moves. We all have different movement patterns and these patterns are as a result of a complex interaction between our muscles, ligaments and our nervous systems. Poor movement patterns often result in injury. Fortunately, we can manipulate or improve movement patterns to heal our injuries. The exercises I'm going to be taking you through work towards better biomechanics by improving joint control during dynamic activities, improving motor control, restoring hip, knee and ankle alignment and of course, improving strength and flexibility. The crux of Pes and Sarine syndrome is that there's a large stress running down the inside of the knee. Put very simply, we need to perform exercises that take the stress away from the inside of the knee. I thought it would be helpful for you to make use of a few tools to measure your progress along the way. We call these tools outcome measurement tools because they give us a clearer picture of how we are progressing with our rehabilitation. It often helps us to stay motivated and compliant with our exercise program because we are actually able to see the effects that these exercises are having on our bodies. If you would like to make use of some of these tools, please watch this video on outcome measurement tools for Pes and Sarine syndrome. This video will give you more information about what these tools are and how you can use them to monitor your progress. Ideally, you want to work through these exercises at least four to five times before you progress to the next set of exercises, which I will be showing you in the next video. The first set of exercises include basic spinal, pelvic and lower body mobility drills. We will also start with the building blocks of basic core strengthening by teaching you how to activate your transversus abdominis muscle and then we'll move on to a very basic glute strengthening exercise. Now everybody performing these exercises will be at a different level of strength and flexibility. This means that not everyone will do the same number of sets and repetitions, but a good starting point would be to try and do three sets of 10 repetitions of each exercise using pain as your guide. This means that if you are experiencing an intensity of more than a 3 out of 10 pain, you should maybe try and reduce the number of sets or repetitions to make the exercise more manageable. To do this set of exercises, you will be needing an exercise mat, a foam roller, a power band, a mini band, and a stability ball. In all our routines of the exercises over the next few videos, we will always start with the mobility and stretching drills first to make sure that you're properly warmed up before we get into the strengthening kind of exercises. The first exercises we are going to start with is going to be foam rolling your hamstrings, your adductors, and your quad muscles. To roll your hamstrings, you're going to place a foam roller under your hamstrings, Prop yourself up with your hands and you're going to roll up and down on your hamstrings. You can, to add more weight onto one hamstring, cross one leg over the other and do the same thing of rolling up and down. You can roll more on the side on the outside of your hamstring or you can turn and roll more on the inside of your hamstring. To roll your adductor muscles, the muscles that run along the inside of your thigh, we're going to place the roller linear to you and perpendicular to your leg and you're going to roll up and down along the inside of your thigh all the way up to your groin and all the way back to your knee. If you 
find a particularly sore spot, you can hold it in that position and bend and straighten your knee. And you'll feel it pulling directly into that sore spot. To roll your quads, you're going to place the roller under you, pump yourself up on your other foot and you're going to roll up and down on your quad muscle all the way from your hip down to your knee and the same thing if you find a particular area of tension hold it on that spot and you're going to slowly bend and extend your knee like that in that spot find a different place bend and extend again you want to kind of aim to do 10 rolls up and down on each muscle and maybe do this two to three times before we start on our next drops the next exercise we're going to do we call supine knee drops or supine lumbar rotations. It's just to introduce a little bit of movement and especially rotational components into your lumbar and pelvic area. So you're going to lie on your back, place your knees together and you're going to drop your knees, maybe place your arms at 90 degrees. You're going to drop your knees side to side allowing a stretch into that area, up to your back, through your glutes and into your hamstring. And you're just going to rock gently like that from side to side. Like I said in the beginning, everyone is at a different level, so the number of sets and repetitions you'll do will all differ. But if you're not getting too much discomfort with this movement, try and repeat it about 30 times. So it's about three sets of ten. And as you get more movement, you can allow those knees to try and touch down to the ground and feel that stretch into your lower back area. This next exercise we call a three-way prayer. And it's really nice to introduce some side-to-side -side movement in your spine, in the center and on either side of your spine. You're just going to need a stability ball for this and a bench to sit on. You're going to stretch forward as far as you can and in that position you're just going to roll the ball from side to side feeling a stretch all the way down your lats to your lower back rolling as far as you can holding in that end position stretching and rolling forward and rolling all the way to the other side as far as you could feeling that stretch down your side you want to try and do it 10 times in each direction and you're going to do two sets of those. Stretching as far as you can the whole time, keeping your sit bones down on the bench. The next exercise we call Captain Camel. This is also a spinal mobility exercise which works your spine in varying degrees of flexion and extension. So you're going to get into a four point position and you want to think about tucking your bum in, arching your back up towards the roof, tucking your head in, and then alternating, arching your back, sticking your bum into the air, looking up towards the ceiling, dropping your shoulder blades back, and then rounding out again, pushing all the way up to the ceiling, feel that stretch, and push into the down, shoulder blades back, and you're going to keep repeating this. Try and aim for 30 repetitions of this exercise too. Now we're just going to hold a nice sustained hamstring stretch. We want to try and bias the stretch to your inside hamstring muscles. So all you're going to do is a normal hamstring stretch, but you're just going to twist your foot slightly inwards to get what we call tibial internal rotation. This just means that your inside hamstring muscle is going to be stretching a little bit more than the outside one. You're just going to take, you can take a towel or a rope, something simple, lie on your back and you're going to place that around your foot. Okay, remember what we said about twisting the foot inwards and you're going to pull that up towards you, keeping your knees straight and we're just going to hold the sustained stretch position for 30 seconds. Every passive sustained stretch that you do, you want to aim to hold for 30 seconds and repeat it three times on each leg. Most people always just want to stretch the leg that's sore. I promise you it will do you good to stretch both sides. So you're going to do 30 seconds on the side and 30 seconds on the other side and repeat that three times. In this exercise, 
exercise, we're going to be using your power band to do an exercise we call the hip thrust. So you're going to place the band, your leg, into the band and pull it right up towards your groin. Making sure that you can feel the stretch of the band pulling your hip backwards. Place your other leg forwards and you're just going to tilt your pelvis forward by tucking your bum in and squeezing your glutes. Feeling a nice stretch down the front of your leg and then letting go. And then squeezing it forward and letting go. And squeezing forward and letting go. From the side, and pull up like this. Squeeze and let go. It's not going to be a hold sustained stretch. You're going to be moving in and out of this position in what we call a dynamic movement. So just squeezing and letting go. And we want to try and do this 30 times on the right and then 30 times on the left. And maybe you can do two sets of this. Make sure that you can feel your hips loosened up nicely by the end and that they've unlocked a lot in the front. The next exercise is going to be a hold and sustain stretch for your quad muscles. So you want to get a surface about step height. This might be quite high for some of you, especially if your quads are really tight. You can maybe get a surface that's about half this height. But you're going to get yourself into the same position as the last exercise without the power band. And you're going to put your foot up onto the surface in front of you and into that position. I want you to think the whole time about squeezing your butt. Stick your finger into your butt so that you can feel it hard when you squeeze your glutes. And as you squeeze and tilt your pelvis forward, you'll get a nice sustained stretch down the front of your quad. Try not to let your back arch or to lean forward. You want to think rather about tilting and tucking your pelvis in to feel that nice stretch down the front. Remember what I said about hold sustained stretches? You want to hold them for 30 seconds and you're going to do it three times on either side. Now that we've finished all the mobility and flexibility drills, you should hopefully be feeling much looser and more mobile. We're going to start with the building blocks of core strength, which is learning how to activate your core muscles and specifically your transversus abdominis muscle. I'm going to refer you to another separate video that teaches you exactly how to do the most basic core activation. You can see the link here on the top left hand corner of the video and we're going to use that activation once you've got it right to build it into this exercise which we call marching bridges. So you're going to lie on your back once you've gone and you've watched that other video and you know how to activate your core, you're going to engage that activation, lift your butt up into the air, squeezing your pelvis towards the ceiling, and you're going to try and keep your pelvis level the whole time while you lift one knee up and place it slowly down. And lift the other and place it slowly down. And you're going to continue alternating like this, until you reach 10 on either side. If you feel like you're losing form or your butt is dropping or your back is arching or your hamstrings are cramping before then, rather just do it five times on either side. The most important thing is your form. You don't want to be using the wrong muscles here. If you feel like your hamstrings are going to cramp, push your heels into the ground and lift your toes. Tuck your bum and make sure you're squeezing your bum the whole way up and that should stop your hamstrings from working too hard. You want to make sure that as you lift your knee, your pelvis doesn't drop to one side and then drop to the other side. Okay, so you want to tuck your bum in, push your pelvis up into the air, keep that core nice and active so it holds your pelvis stable, and you're just going to lift alternating legs, holding that core activation, and also not allowing your knees to drop inwards. You want to hold your out. Try and aim to do three sets of however many repetitions you think you can handle with good form. Our last exercise in this routine is what we call the clam exercise. Here you're going to be using your mini band which you're going to place around your knees. This exercise is going to strengthen your gluteus medius muscle which is the hip adductor so it takes the pressure off your hip adductors and ultimately the pressure 
also to be his and Sabrina's, but pulling me outwards. So in this, this routine of exercises, we're going to be doing this in a more stable, controlled environment where you're not having to weight bend and keep your balance. And in the next few videos, we'll make it harder and more functional by getting you into a standing position and asking you to do a similar thing. So for this exercise, you're going to lie on your side, prop yourself up with your elbow. You want to try and make sure that your shoulders, your hips and your knees are in line. Too often these days we're working in a hip flexion position. So I actually want you to try and get into hip extension and learn how to work your booty, gluteus medius muscle in hip extension. So make sure you're not slouching into your shoulder. You're going to lift up through there. Keep your hand on your hip. Squeeze your glutes and push your hips forward. And you're going to lift your top knee up into the band and then relax. Make sure that as you lift your knee, you don't drop your pelvis backwards to cheat and use your hip flexor. You want to keep your pelvis forward, keep your hips up, and you're going to lift your top knee and drop. You should feel it burning in that area. If you're unsure as to whether you're using the right muscle, poke a finger into your glutes there. You should be able to feel that muscle working under your finger as you lift and let go. If you are really weak and you really back into lift your knee against the resistance of the band, take the band off and just perform the movement without the band until you feel like you've gotten that motor control of that muscle back and you're now ready to start to lift the band. Try and aim for three sets of ten on each side, left and right. Good luck with all these exercises. I hope it starts you on your road to recovery. Please don't forget to hit that like button, consider subscribing to my channel and watch out for this week's video in the rehabilitation series of Pez and Sarine Syndrome. Take care and see you soon.